Welcome to episode 204 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I'll be your host. And today we're going to talk about because that's what successful people do. We're making our way through the fog of life and clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So my family loves to watch entrepreneurial TV shows. Um, you know, we'll call it reality television. You know, there's a lot of things that are reality television. But what we found is that the entrepreneurial shows kind of feel the most like reality television to us because perhaps it's it's our experience as a family. We're a small business family. We understand we've been in business the entire life of my kids. They grew up in it, right? The last 20 years, is we've been a small business family. So we can kind of see the realities in the experiences of these entrepreneurs and these business people in these TV shows. One of those, the one that we just started recently watching is called Undercover Billionaire. It's on the Discovery Plus network or Discovery Plus. Um, and the premise is this, you, you take uh, three billionaires and then you strip them of all their money and their reputation and their contacts and their resources. And then they put them into cities in the US, small cities. And their task is they give them $100, a vehicle to drive, a phone, a, you know, an iPhone and a fake identity. And, they, and their task is to within 90 days, they have to build a million dollar business, a, a business that values out at a million dollars by independent business uh, auditors. Harder than you might think, because th within that, they have to figure out where they're gonna live. Who, <laughs> so they, they get into the city, they have a car, a hundred bucks, and they have to figure out like, where am I gonna stay tonight? It's pretty awesome. But one of the contestants, Grant Cardone, um, you know, very controversial character. You know, some people really love him, some people really hate him. And, uh, but either way, Grant Cardone is one of the characters in the show, and he said something in the last episode that really stuck in my brain. Now, what happened was they started the show pre-COVID, and he was getting some momentum. They all were, and then COVID hit. They shut the show down, so everyone's disappointed, especially Grant, because he had some momentum going, and then they bring them back once the, the pandemic ends enough for them to do that. And so Grant had gotten to this position where he helped a small business owner with a sale. The guy owned, it was Pueblo, Colorado. Um, they, he had helped him with a sale at his mattress store and he had just gotten an advance for $10,000. So he's ex excited because he you know, said to the guy, hey, will you give me a $10,000 advance and I'll continue to help you with these sales and my performance and I'll help you grow your businesses. So he was excited right then the show ended. He came back. He still had the $10,000 check. He didn't catch it. And um, he went back to the business owner and he said, hey, like, uh, where are we at? Can we still move forward? And the business owner was like, well, I've hired in the meantime. Like, we started this whole other thing and I hired an entire marketing department that's helping us with this and that. And that was obviously disappointing for Grant because he was going to be like the marketing help. And so as they're working through that, Grant said this. He's like, you know, that's the thing with successful people, man. Something happens and they keep moving. That's it. Successful people, they don't wait around. They go. And I was like, that's so true. That is a trait that I see in successful people. Something happens, they change, they pivot, they move, and they keep going, and they're gone. They're not going to be there when you get back because they've moved on and moved forward. So I thought it would be cool today to give you a little list of things that I think that's what successful people do, right? Why? Because that's just what successful people do. So that first one is uh, that we just said is they move, right? They continue to go and move forward. They react. Something happens, and they change. They don't sit there. They don't feel bad about their situation. They don't cry over what happened. They keep moving. And when you look at any successful person, you realize that is what they do. Uh, the next one is, I think they are just better counter punchers than punchers. They're better counter punchers than punchers. Uh, I don't think anybody else exhibits this more than uh, one of my business mentors, Gary Vaynerchuk, because he will, a lot of people will think he's, you know, can see into the future and what's going to happen. He's like, no, 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 no. I'm just paying attention enough that I see what's happening and I react to it first. And as I think about it, most successful people I know are incredible counter punchers because no one is immune from trial or struggle or taking a punch in the face, an unexpected thing, right? In this last 18 months, like we've all taken that. The most successful people are the ones who were able to throw a punch back. The next one, um, I think most successful people, I think they are quick to be able to accept the things they can't change and really focus on changing the things that they can. They're very quick, they'll be like, not waste energy and attention dwelling on an issue saying, oh, 
let me just dwell on this and stew on it when they can't change it because you can't change what you can't control. So if you can identify the things that are out of your control anyway, and then it frees up all the energy because when you're focused on those things that you can't change, right? It's filling up your brain space. It's draining all your emotional energy, right? It's drilling holes in your boat. Every time you think of those things, you're trying to go somewhere, but you're, at the same time you have a drill in your hand and you're just popping holes in the bottom of the canoe. That doesn't work. The most successful people understand that quickly and then can refocus all that emotional energy and intelligence into things they can change. Uh, next thing, learn this from Jocko Willink. Little, little hint, uh, Jocko's going to be on this podcast. We've booked it. We're going to do the interview. So if you have any questions or thoughts, what you'd like me to ask them, email me, DM them, and we'll try to cover some of those questions in the interview. It's kind of a, I, I love, I love the fact Jocko's going to be on the show, but this principle, his principle of extreme ownership is the fact that you accept responsibility for everything that happens. You don't go around blaming this person and that person and that person. The most successful people don't go around blaming. They don't waste their time blaming. They say, you know what? Here's what I could have done to make this situation better. I could have made sure you were more prepared. I could have made sure that um, I was clearer with you and that we were aligned. And the funny thing is when you take ownership instead of blaming, the other people around you also step up and take ownership. So the most successful people take extreme ownership. The next one is that uh, the most successful people are able to block out the tempting but unhelpful. So there's a lot of things going on, especially in the news and media and you know, all types of political things. And everyone has a position somewhere in there, right? From conservative, liberal, right? From the extremes to the center, all, all types of things. And hearing things that validate your position are really tempting and tasty, right? You want to lean in and be like, yes, yes, I agree with that. Yeah, those people suck. The most successful people are able to block out, even though it's tempting to dive into that, they block it out because it's unhelpful. And they realize the most, the most effective thing they can do to forward their beliefs is build a really big building, right? Not to tear other ones down, but to say like, hey, if I build a big business, I get money, I get influence, I get um, freedom, time back. So they understand that so they can block out the, un the tempting but unhelpful. Uh, two more, really successful people are great at collecting dots. Uh, I've often said that I'm a professional dot collector and a dot could be a relationship, uh, a, little develop a little technology development, um, it could be a piece of content. It could be um, going to a conference. It can be an article that I read, right? You collect all these dots. And just in the same way that if you've ever seen a star map, right, of the stars in the sky, and then you see the line go through that traces out what the constellation could be, right? Oh, it's the Big Dipper. There's Orion's belt, right? You can do all those things. That's how, what I mean. The most successful people collect the dots. They collect them constantly. They're absorb, 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 collect, get them on the board, and then every once in a while, they see the way through. And the most successful people are great at doing that. Finally, in the last one, I heard this from a retired general. I can't remember his name. And he said, I think the best leaders learn and think an inch deep, but a mile wide. And then they go deep on some really critical areas. So it's impossible to go deep in every area. But he says, I need to be an inch deep across a long stretch so that you can see the whole landscape. And, and this is one of the things that I encourage people to do right now with blockchain tech and NFTs. I know it can be confusing, but get an inch deep. Why? Because it's relevant to culture, it's relevant to business, and it will be for a long time, called Web 3.0, Web 3. That's just a small example. The most successful people have this huge understanding. I know you've met those people. We're like, man, they know something about everything. These are the people that can have a conversation at a party with anyone. Why? Because they're an inch deep and a mile wide. And then they have their areas where they're extremely gifted and competent, where they go a mile deep, right? And that's when, you know, usually that's the area in which they really excel. So those are the things that I think are, why do they do it? Because that's just what successful people do. So I thought I'd share those thoughts with you, get you thinking a little bit at the beginning of 2022, hoping that you can deploy some of those things, be more successful, be more empathetic, be more generous, be more caring, because why? because you're a successful person. That's why we hang out with each other. So until next week, I hope you have a great successful week doing what successful people do because it's just what successful people do. I'll see you next week.